Welcome to the Matt Beck Podcast. Woke up this way. He's got a lot of cool stuff he's going to show you today. The latest news, industry topics, and business tips. For all hairstylists and salon owners, it's time to flip the script. Grab your precision scissors, barber combs, and swivel twist razors. Let's cut a bob, a quick shag, pixie cut with a little bit of flavor. Check out the live classes, product reviews, let's rock on. Don't forget to check out freesaloneducation.com. I woke up this way. It's going to be a great day. Chop it, clip it, spray it, flip it. I woke up this way. What's up, guys? Welcome to the show. Very excited to see you guys all in the chat logging in. <laughs> What's up, Jess? What's up, Lynn? Kristen had to leave, I think. Everybody say hello in the chat. As soon as you get logged in, say hello. Uh, make sure you do me a favor and you share this show on whatever platform you're watching on right now. Just hit that share button for me. That's all I ask the whole time. Besides you learning stuff is please just hit that share button. Uh, Babs, good to see you. Laura, good to see you. Uh, Salita. Cool. Uh, Dan, what's up? Let's see. Logging in, logging in, logging in. Good, 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 good. All right, guys, so I got a special show for you guys today. I got my good friend Ben Brown, uh, who's going to be coming on here from the UK. <laughs> Five hours ahead. Thought it was six. That's why we're a little late. <laughs> so, so he's quickly prepping, guys. I caught him an hour off guard, but he's ready to share some stuff with you guys. It's going to be really fun. So say hello. Uh, make sure that you do me a favor. And if you're new to this show, if you've never watched this show before, type new in the chat. Uh, if you're an OG, you've been watching this show, you're now 45 episodes with me. Uh, type OG in the chat as well. Um, super, just super excited to be with you guys today, sharing some education, watching Ben with you guys. Um, sharing your questions, all of that. Now, you guys know how this show works. If you have a question for Ben, type Q and put your question. So Q and then your question, and I will make sure that I ask him that question for you. And, you know, we'll keep things going. Look at our OGs in the chat here. We got Jess, Lynn, Christina, Adele, Jody, and we got a newbie, Paul. Paul, thanks for joining us. Very, very cool. Robin, what's up? Glennis, OG, what's up? Savarna, good to see you. Charlene, newbie, you guys are in for a treat. Uh, it's going to be a really fun time. All right, let me see. Without further ado, Ben, you ready for me to pull you in here? I'm ready. All right, cool. Let's see. All right, there he is, ladies and gentlemen, Ben Brown. Good, good How's friend. Going, guys? Good to I'll see you. This way a little bit. How are we all? <laughs> so, Ben. Uh, I cannot wait to see this. Are you prepped? Are you, you feel good? Can I talk to you for a sec? I'm ready. <laughs> All right. So this is super exciting because I've, I've watched you cut hair online for a long time, but I've yeah. never, I've never actually had a, a time where I could ask you questions. So I'm just as excited as everybody else in the chat, uh, to watch you cut some hair. Uh, Ben is a precision hair cutter for sure. We are uh, going to do it. And we're going to do it today. So Ben, take it away. Uh, and I'll jump in, you know, as needed here. Firstly, a huge thank you. And I'm so grateful to Matt for having me here on this amazing channel. Uh, as Matt said, I'm really excited to be sharing with you today uh, some precision hairdressing. Now, to do this, I wanted to break the haircut into two main graduation families. One is going to be square and the other is going to be triangle. So I'm actually going to be doing a asymmetric precision okay. haircut, kind of a new romantic feel to it. So what I want to stress, guys, is this isn't really necessary for the client. This is for the, the lover of haircutting, okay? As Matt said, I seem to have lost my watch and didn't know the time. <laughs> so I was an hour off guard. Yeah, this is um, funny. So you must it's ben, add some fun to the day. Yeah, for sure. So Ben uh, is literally like just kind of getting ready or whatever. And I call and, and we thought he was six hours ahead, but he's actually only five hours. I ahead. was just sitting there sipping my English tea and um, all relaxed. And then I got this phone call. I thought, wow, I know what's happened here. But you know <laughs> what, guys? I am, I'm really up for this. I am so excited for this. Uh, why am I so excited for it? Well, the thing is, guys, I watch a lot of YouTube channels as well. So I watch Matt's. I was watching it with Sam, was, Sam Biddles on the other day. So I watch this channel. Okay, I'm a fan like you. So to be here now sharing with you, this is a big thing to me. So I am going to 
really go strong. So what we've done so far, guys, is we've started to zone our hair cut. Now, the zoning process to cutting hair is really an opportunity for you to map your hair cut, taking into consideration things like hair growth patterns, hairlines, and really mapping out your plan of how you're going to cut hair. So let me explain my plan to you. This whole side that you see here is going to be cut in a square graduation. This means it's going to be kind of like a box bob shape. So I'm going to be taking you through how to cut a perfect line to the jaw, how to then bevel that line to collapse that line in so that your line isn't sitting too triangular. I'm going to show you how to refine precision outline to get that really perfect, crisp, ultra precise, so sharp if you look at it, you'll scratch your eye hairline. And then I'm going to be showing you on this side a graduated bob. Now this is kind of a salon favorite. The graduated bob has so many applications because you get this great benefit of having it short at the back, flattening where the hair's got the most, the hair's got the most hair, and pushing the weight towards the front. So firstly, let's just look at one bit of cutting theory. Whenever I teach anybody, I teach what things influence my decisions when I cut hair. One of the biggest things is the zones of the hair. There are three zones. You have the crown that starts right at the bottom of the parietal bone, working to the mastoid process or the corner of the hairline. Then you have the apex, which runs right across the top of the hair. Okay. Now, when you get to this point here, what you have to understand is you've got to the recession of the hairline and now you're entering the front zone. So we have three zones and they vary in how much hair is in them. It's as simple as that. The back has eight times more hair than the rest of it all put together. So ultimately, guys, if we don't take that into consideration, what ends up happening is we can have the hair really thin at the front and really thick at the back. So even when, it, like when Sam was doing his haircut and he was doing uh, a really cool longer haircut, he was talking about that and talking about how he's going to collapse shape. It's a similar thing. Taking the zones into consideration is useful whether you're doing work like that or work like this. It applies to all genres of haircutting. So, where do we start the haircut and why? Big, big point. So firstly, we're going to start the back today, guys. And I'm going to answer that why in a moment. First, let me just get the head over. There is one thing I want to say uh, real quick because uh, Pivot Point stepped up and they were like... Massively. Yeah, we're going to shoot uh, Ben over a mannequin head. So thank you to Pivot Point for that as well. Yeah, and I want to thank um, Paula from Pivot Point UK. So I've also been uh, drove to my house and got this off. So uh, made me feel very special. Did that really happen? It 100% happened. <laughs> I couldn't wow. believe it. I got a knock at the door this morning at like 8.30 and during lockdown, like I don't know what 8.30 looks like. I've been okay. like getting up much later. Okay, huge so, shout out to Pivot Point. That's oh, awesome. Oh, ginormous. Yeah. <laughs> Guys, what, what would you call this section? I call this a profile section, okay? It's a section that is simply working vertical and it's running across the silhouette of the head. Okay, so let me just put this in a little bit neater. So, what we have is our section working in the middle here. Now, the reason you would start a graduated bob vertical is very simple. Because whatever length you cut the top, that is where the weight will sit. The angle of your distribution or your cut line affects how much weight you'll have. Let me, let me demonstrate this. So you've got a client or a guest in the salon, and they have said to you that they want a lot of length at the front, but they want it short at the back. So this first section is going to be vertically triangular. Now, if my triangle section goes quite low to the horizontal, as that falls, I'm building a lot of weight in one area. So I'm going to get a lot more of a step or what we call stationary graduation. Let's say I take my vertical shape, my, um, my vertical shape very close to the top. 
as that falls, there's not much weight at all. It's actually looking quite uniform. So these are choices you make. And one of the things I want to teach people is what influences our choices? How do we know to cut this way? Okay. It's all to do with the fundamental theory. So we're going to start doing the graduated bob side. So as I take my vertical section, I'm going to pull it 90 degree from the head. So straight out from the head. And I'm going to start to cut the top. Now, what, I, what I've done here now is where this section is sitting is where the weight will start to form. That is where your graduated bob will start to build its weight. And Ben, we talk about this a lot, but that's kind of, I love your visual on this. And I think that um, people don't realize, and we're so, we're taught here definitely that um, to kind of keep the elevation low at this point, but the head shape is different. It, it kind of curves in, mm. right? Yeah. yeah, I mean, if you, that's a really good point, Matt, because you're absolutely right. After the occipital bone, the head begins to, if you like, taper in. It gets thinner towards the nape. So, like, we're using a vertical triangular shape here, which means that when I pull this section straight out like this and let that fall, it simply means I'm building weight vertical. My weight is sitting at the top. Now, when you work vertical, Okay, let me give you a little bit of theory on where the weight sits when you cut. If you put it straight out, guys, the weight will sit at the top of the section. So think about it. If you were to comb this down now, you could have a very, very slight line at the top, depending on the angle of your distribution. Okay. That's because the weight is traveling vertical. Now, imagine that if I took a section going straight across, pulled it out horizontally, and I cut that horizontally. Think about it, if you comb that section down, where would the weight sit then? It would sit at the bottom. You would see a line at the bottom of the section. So you would actually see the line at the bottom. Why would that be? It's because the weight now is at the bottom. So vertical, the weight travels up to the top. Horizontal, it's maximum weight and it sits at the bottom. Now, when we, when we cut the hair on a diagonal, well, when we're not building weight vertical or horizontal, the weight is traveling, and it's traveling in a direction. I said, every time I do this cut, I sweat. I'm sweating now, so don't worry. <laughs> uh, I'm sweating like crazy. Um, this is like the most exercise I've had all throughout lockdown, man. So I feel like I should say thank you. So I'm sweating. Um, I'm not but, even working. Oh, this is it. <laughs> but this is the point, guys. Understanding where weight forms and why really is the key to cutting hair because that is all a haircut is. It's how and why we build the weight. Now, I gave you a little example of that shape. Now I'm going to take my next section, which is going to be pivoting. Do we understand how to pivot and why we pivot? Let's go into a little bit of detail. I promise you guys, it does get a little bit faster how I cut. It's just initially, there's a lot to explain. So we take the section, always starting from the profile. So now we were at six o'clock, yeah? Five, four, three, and then you work like this. So you are constantly like a clock moving, but you're always gonna be in the middle, okay? Now, if I put my clip back in there, I don't want you to over-direct this. We're not gonna pull this across. I want you to pull this back to the wall behind you. So this would go flat back behind you. That's because if you're over directing, you're gonna be building up more length here at the bottom than the top. Why? Because you're traveling on a diagonal. So this section is further away than the guy, than the top one. So the sections won't be quite equal. So you would be pulling this section like this, straight out. So now I'm going to cut this side. Get those questions coming in, guys. Any questions, fire away. Yeah, if you guys have a question, type Q and put your question so I can see it in the chat. When I was watching Sam the other day, I was um, putting question after question after question. <laughs> you were. So, I mean, where else would I get the opportunity to ask um, Sam Villa a question? I mean, you know, especially in the UK, 
Right. He's an amazing hairdresser. So that's one of the great things that I think Matt's doing with 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 what he does. I mean, you know, he connects a lot of people. So like, I got to connect with Sam without him knowing. <laughs> right. But but at the same time, you know, I got to watch an amazing person cut hair. So you know, I'm very grateful. Well, I think people too are. So Pivot Point UK is already shouting out in the chat. Oh yeah! Thank you guys Honestly, so much. Point UK, thank you so much. Um, I think so, Paula's husband literally came to my house this morning to drop off his hair. That's so awesome. So one one thing that uh, people are kind of blown up about in the chat is the fact that you're lefty, which is great. I didn't realize. Yeah. That. So. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a South Paul. Uh, I am a lefty, and this is the thing though. I say to people, because I teach a lot of people who are right-handed. And everyone who's ever taught me was right-handed. I don't really think it, it matters too much. What I would say, if anyone has any left-handed hairs in their salon, maybe I could share a tip with you on how to teach them. Um, if, let's say, you're doing a haircut and you want to teach them how to cut the left-hand side of that haircut, just as an example, you cut the right-hand side as a demonstration because we both do exactly the same thing, just on the opposite sides. So for an example, the way I cut this side, my hand could be like this. And the other side, it might be over. So yeah. the right-handed hairdresser will do exactly the same things. They would just do it on the opposite sides. So if you do have a left-handed hairdresser in your salon, and let's just, let's just try that. Try that by cutting the right-hand side and demonstrating to them how that's done. And then you can go through and let them do it. So you'll say, this is how you're gonna cut the, the left-hand side like this, and they can then replicate it. I found that helps a lot. I, ha I had to learn how to cut right-handed as well when I teach because I have to be able to show people how they're gonna hold the scissors, how they're gonna do the Eastern grip. Yeah. The Eastern grip, obviously, is the, let's just get in there, is yeah. the reverse of your scissor. So when you reverse your scissor like this, standard grip, Eastern grip. So I do a lot of, in my classes, I do a lot talking about how to make sure the ergonomics of how you cut hair isn't going to limit your uh, career as a hairdresser. Make sure you do look after your, your hands, your wrist, your thumb. What, um, so you see guys, sorry, Matt. You just got a question. Uh, combing, are you combing to the guide? It looks like you are. You're combing. Yeah, yeah. So my guide is underneath. So for an example, because we're pivoting, the guide is always in the center. So for example, one of my sections was here, like, like just there, then one was here, and then the next, last one's here. So as I comb down, guys, I comb with elevation, controlling my cut line, we can't and see lower to find my guide. Now, what this is giving you is a you flat go. horizontal shape, or a square horizontal shape. And you can check this by working vertical. So as you work vertical, and you cross check, you can see, you can have a little look to make sure that you are in fact cutting everything to the guide correct. Then we're gonna take that in two, we wanna be consistent with our section size. Anybody know why you, you need to keep your sections quite fine? I only discovered this recently. It's because it stops you getting any unwanted over direction because if your section is like, like this thick, and you comb all that together, you're kind of over-directing from two points, not one, and it can basically give you almost two guidelines. So it's a way of limiting the unwanted over-direction. Let me see if I can't give you guys a slightly better view of this. So you see, I'm pulling this back flat to the wall behind me. Do you see that, guys? As we come through here, let that go. Groom down. This is the graduated bob side, guys. So the reason I like to do an asymmetric when I do my demonstrations is it allows me to, if you like, demonstrate two different um, techniques. One is square graduation, the other is triangular. So if I just did a graduated bob for you all, that's great. I do get to show you that. But it's kind of a great opportunity to be with you all today. So of course, we're able to do two, so I can just check my hair cut there. So that is your cross check, okay? What scissors are and you what using? What this is giving you, sorry? What scissors are you using? Scissors. Yeah. Uh, I'm using Mitsutani today. I'm using the Mitsutani MMP 
blade. So I'm using a 5.2 inch blade, standard set, not offset. Hopefully you can see that okay. I like it. Yeah. Cool. It's nice. It's fairly new to me as well. I got this at the start of lockdown. Can you believe that? Okay. I got a really good pair of scissors just as soon as I wasn't allowed to use them. So that was good. So now, guys, we release our zone two. So there's three zones of the graduated bar. Okay. We have below the occipital, working from the occipital to mid apex, mid apex to the front. All have their uses. This is to establish where and how much weight we want. This is going to establish our length at the front and the length that we're going to have in regards to the crown. The front helps to control anything going wrong around the hairline. Of course, we have recessions in hairlines. We have to be very careful and we have to compensate for that. So when you get into zone two, if I just turn this around and maybe walk behind, I can maybe show you a little bit better. We're going to take this section quite fine and work on a forward diagonal. So very, very simple. Okay. Now, all our other sections really were fairly complicated in comparison. So there's no more pivoting. There's no more of that. We just get to pull the section down each time. Now, it's a very difficult thing to say. If someone said to me, what degree of elevation are you using? Is it 45? Or... I always say I'm not a protractor. It's a very difficult thing to answer. But I would say the level we go here, guys, okay, the, what we're going to get if we go low is we're going to get more weight. We're going to keep length. But the problem with that can be you can also form a step. Okay. Hey, Ben, try something Go too me. high. So try if I start to get... Sorry? Just try to move the camera a little bit. I just to grab a Wi-Fi signal, maybe. You know what I mean? Just adjust it. It's just a little choppy, just so. Yeah. Are we okay? Yeah. Sometimes when you move it around, it kind of regrabs a better signal. I feel like I don't. Know. Yeah. Let me just turn off my phone as well. Maybe that's. Uh... So, what we do now, guys, is we simply pull the section, take the piece of hair from underneath. And you're going to pull the section down to find your guide. Okay. So let me turn this to show you again. So as I come down. As you come down. Do you see this, guys? Yeah, let's and as that falls through, that weight's traveling towards the front. So you see, by having on a diagonal, our weight's traveling, not remaining stationary. Now, I'm going to take my next section, which is going to be going all the way into the front. This is the money section now, because this is where I get to decide on the length I want at the front. This is such a long doll's head, it's almost a shame to take it so short, but... <laughs> It's exciting. Yeah. Right. So now you see, guys, my section is running right to the front. So we are going to go back to what I've just cut from the middle. Why do we start in the middle? We start in the middle because that is the area with the highest elevation. So our elevation is at its highest at the back due to the fact that this zone has the most hair and we want the weight to travel downhill. Take another section. We are slightly over-directing it back, if you notice, slightly back here, lifting it. Now, as this falls, a lot of people start to like lose breath because they see a short piece of hair here. This here is your guideline for the side. We're not cutting the length or the line at the moment. We are only cutting the graduation. So right now, I don't want you to worry about the line, which is the outline. I just want you to look at the length. As I let this fall, there we go. How's that looking, Matt? That looks good. That's a good way to say that because I always think about the um, the line. So I always just put in a line. I never think about that as the as the length of the cut in the whole in that whole area. Yeah, but that's a good call. I like that. Well, I, I learned that from Jamie Mazella, and he was saying to me, "Don't put your line. He said, don't worry. Don't worry about your line. Put it in if you want." 
But don't worry, he said, because you're going to put the line in afterwards. He goes, all right, now just get your graduation matching. Don't don't make it too heavy at the front by trying to go too low your elevation. And then when it's dry, you're going to rely too much on texturizing to you know make that look correct, essentially. Yeah. How's the picture going, Matt? Is it working okay? It's a little. It's a little like uh, fuzzy. Um, but it's okay. I mean, I, I think for people, like if you, if you feel like it's fuzzy, um, the way that I focus on, on this kind of thing, cause this is the, you know, reality of the internet, um, watch his finger angle compared to the parting of the section. Um, and you can yeah. really see it that way. Um, don't be so worried. He's cutting a blunt line, so you don't have to worry about that. And then, you know, you can see his angle of his finger through it. That's it. I've done it on purpose so people can't see how sweaty I've got, Matt. That's what I've done. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that yeah. was the funniest thing. Because it's like, do you know, like when we had our first conversation, I was caught unprepared again. And I literally just like jumped into like uh, a room in my house and sat there. You know, I wasn't even in my studio. And because again, I got the time wrong because I think it normally is six hours. Yeah. But because we've just had a daylight savings time here where we have lost an hour, technically in America now, we're only five hours ahead. So it's a boring story, but that's my excuse. And I'm sticking to it. No, so. it totally makes sense. <laughs> so you see, guys, yeah. how do I know what to cut here? Is that a good question here? Like, how do we know what to cut? So let's look at our mechanics. Like we have a few controls here. We have moving the head side to side, which is over direction. This is the main component to my horizontal shape, which is my shape going side to side. My main component for building my vertical shape, the shape going from top to bottom, is the elevation, which is moving the hair up and down. So the more I move the hair here, the more weight or less weight I can control. So if I want the shape fluid, like I want the shape fluid, I don't want any lines, I will have the elevation fairly high and fairly consistent. Like so, as I lift the hair here and cut it, a lot of time, in the way I was taught, that would have been far too high. Everything was pulled very, very low. But if I'm really honest with you, I used to have to do a lot of texturizing when the hair was dry, you know? So I would say, I, I think it's cool to learn different ways and maybe add that to what you do. So if you are already happy with your graduated bobs, maybe just try a little bit of this haircut, like try to add a, an element that I'm doing maybe different to you. It could be the zoning process. It could be the pivoting aspect. It might even be just starting the haircut from with the vertical, not the line. Because that was the thing when I teach a lot in the UK, the guys, they always start with the line first and build the graduation off the line. Whereas I go straight in and just do the graduation. But like I explain, guys, I do that because of the control I get over my vertical shape. And that shape essentially is the shape that is controlling the amount of weight and the position of the weight. And within this haircut especially, they're probably the most critical factors. So you see, guys, I'm lifting. We're not going really low here. Remember, because we're not cutting our line in yet. When I've got the hair dry, I'm going to put my line in. What would you say is the um? So I'm on the final the section of this thing. Sorry, Matt. The elevation on that, on the What's side. What's that, sorry, Matt? Can you hear me? Yeah. Big, big. That is a huge, huge difference in the way I used to do it. I used to pull this always very, very, very low. But... um. You see, you're, you're over-directing it, so you don't need to go too low because if you pull it back, you're going to build length and weight. If you bring it down, you're going to build length and weight. So you're, hit, you're hitting it with a double bubble. You're going low and back. So you oh, have yeah. to remember, like, I'm going back to bring you the length and weight, but I'm going high to make sure that I'm not going too heavy. A lot of people are asking. I think they're just jumping in. Uh, they're asking, what cut is this? So if you just want to, like, recap what sure. kind of what you're doing. So guys, today, what I wanted to do was I wanted to do a precision class. Yeah. Um, so to do this, I'm going to work with the graduation technique, but I'm going to use two core shapes. I'm going to use triangle, and I'm going to use square. So I'm going to be doing an asymmetric haircut, but I'm going to do one side, that is a square graduation, and the other, that is a triangular graduation. We're going to be taking you through some of the simplicity aspects of precision cutting, like the 
the fundamentals. And we're going to take you through some fun stuff, which is the refining process, which is where we get to put in some very sharp outlines. So this is my graduated bobstar, guys. So we are now going to let it go to, go to its natural form, take our section off the natural form, and we're going to cut, cut it to our guide. So this is our final zone, the front zone, for our graduated bob. We no longer now elevate the section. We bring everything back to a stationary guide. Why? Why all of a sudden are we changing? Because of this, because of that little thing beginning with R, a recession. If we start to do it more and more and more, our guideline suddenly goes, follows the hairline, okay? We have to be very, very conscientious of the fact that the density shift at the front is pretty critical. So we bring it back to the same elevation each time. This is going to elongate the front, but we're going to do that when the hair's dry. So remember, right now, just worry about your graduation. That's all I'd like to do if you're doing this haircut. Just worry about your graduation and put your lining when the hair's dry. To be fair, you've pretty much got the shape anyway. So you, you haven't really lost the length. You're just gonna put the length in sharper once we've dried our section. How's it looking, Matt? Uh, it's looking good. So we come to the square graduation. This was my nemesis for a long time. This was the hardest haircut I used to do. And uh, I love it now. I demonstrate this haircut quite a lot in, in salons in the, in the UK. So when I, when I do a combination of shape like I am today, which is an asymmetric haircut, I still expect my shape to blend. So to do this, we're going to take a guideline from this side that I've already cut. And I'm going to take it just straight down and just get myself a new profile section, as easy as that. This is going to be my section one for my square graduation. Now, with a square grad, it's different to the triangular in the sense that with the triangular section here, we pivoted from the profile. Here we just stay vertical. We just over direct back onto previous. Very, very simple, very, very easy. So all we're gonna do here, guys, is take section two and over direct it onto section one. That's our guideline. This means section two is a little longer than section one. Then we get number three, three goes to two. So it increase, increases slowly in length and weight, working towards the outline of the hairline. I would use this. I would use this personally if I had a client that had a very difficult name. I think this is a great, great technique to do because it helps to keep it length on the knee. Whereas the triangular shape is really better for a client who says the hair's really thick and doesn't want too much hair around the knee. So you've got one of these techniques which is good for keeping length, and one that's really good for flattening it. So the triangular where you pivot is going to help you to flatten the shape behind the ear. The square will help you keep length on a difficult nape or hairline. So I'm going to split this in two just because I, we don't want to take too much hair in our hands at once. Sometimes it's good just to latch your comb in, in your thumb just so you can mark the trajectory of your section. Ben, so we're going to do, we're, we're do something crazy after you yes, finish this section. Um, I'm going to, yeah. I'm going to hang up on you and then I'm going to call you back cool. um, after the section. Cause That's I, think, exciting. I know, right. We'll just mix things up, you know, but I want to, uh, <laughs> I want to try to get your signal back uh, better. So we'll see. Sure. Sweet. And, okay. and this is at 45 well, or not. You're at more 90 degrees, right? Kind of coming out. 90 degrees. Degree. So, but the head is down. So technically it's 45. Right. You see that, guys? The head's down. So when you pull it out straight, if I put the head back head back up, by like put it upright, and we came out straight, we're actually the 45 degree. Yeah, so that's, that's the biggest the thing. This? The, it, the difference between, um, like, your thought process and my thought process is I go degree right off the head shape 
um, and you go degree yeah. uh, as the flat floor, right? So you're kind of basing it on yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. The angle the to wall, the floor. The wall, the ceiling, and the floor. Yeah. Yep. Cool. But I think that works. I think like I, I've learned quite a lot um, from your tutorials, and I like how you use the terms of the head prior to ridge. Like I watched the Pixie demonstration the tutorial you did, yeah. And it was really interesting because you explained exactly why the if you work to the prior to ridge, why it flattens it and why it builds it. And I think that was really useful because. People are scared of sometimes, not all the time, I won't want to generalize with that. They're scared of like things that are very technical because they think, oh, that, yeah, but you're not going to use that on the sound floor. But you actually will. You'll use it a lot on the sound floor. And it, ironically, it makes you faster sometimes with your, with your client because you're, you've made the decision very quickly due to the fact that you've really strong your theory. Yeah, for sure. All right, guess what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hang up on you and call you back right now. Good, no problem. Pause one sec. All right, here we go, guys. Popping in here. Oh, let me, not this, me. Hey, what's up? <laughs> I hope you guys are enjoying the class. I'm really uh, having a good time watching Ben. I know it's a, it's a rough signal, uh, but that's the reality of the internet, guys. So we're, uh, I'm going to call him back right now. Let's see if we can get something better. I also lost the chat on my software. I can still see you guys chatting on my phone. Uh, so I'm watching you guys and all your comments. Um, but for some reason on my software, I can't throw it up there, but you know, again, reality of the internet. So let's call Ben back, get back into this. Let's see. Hello. Hey, here he is. <laughs> here, he is. here he is. Let's bring him back in here. So, here he is. Coming back. There he is. There we go. Pop. Oh, I don't want you in there. Yeah, that looks better. I That's think sometimes Thanks, I'm, I'm learning that the internet tries to control you sometimes. And they, they're like, Yeah, oh my goodness me, yeah. You should have that. I just stopped them to get a little, a little uh, Pepsi Max as well. So I, I took the opportunity to get a little, little refreshing. <laughs> so right. um, we were saying that the difference, difference between talking about elevation as straight from the head which is a very, very useful thing. And the reason that, see Matt, I like things that are very, very pragmatic. And I always found it hard to learn from the head because I felt it may not be a constant because of the people moving the head and stuff, but that, that doesn't matter if you, if, you know, the way you explain it. So I use the floor, the ceiling and the walls because they're constant. You know, they, they can't move no matter how the client moves their head. But at the same time, if they move their head and you're putting it to one, to one or the other, it's going to change anyway. So I think they're both just really important ways of... I, I'd actually quite enjoy to learn that way, to be fair. I really would. I, I, I learn anyway. I think, it, think it's... Uh, as long as you're learning, guys, you're moving forward. For sure. And I really enjoy your tutorials. I think they're great. So guys, that was, that was my section three. So now we're removing section two, okay? Section three will now act as my guide for section four. So now I take section four and I'm over-directing that onto section three. Another useful reason for using, uh, numbering your sections like I am here is it's really cool because you can tell if you've done the same amount of sections on one side to the other. So you can really see if you do the right amount. So remember, like here, you see that right back. Sorry about that, my little dog <laughs> barking away. So that's great, that's sitting nice. So you see what we've got here now is two different shapes. We have a triangular graduation on one side where if I can maybe get a little closer here and show you guys, the graduated shape is essentially working from a shorter to longer point, sending the weight towards the front. It's actually fairly short into the hairline. Now, the square graduation, whoa, look here. Look at all that length. Do you see the difference? I find the square graduation is giving me a more uniform shape. 
Okay, a more uniform shape. So that is really useful, guys, if you're a client or guest that's got a very difficult hair. So we still have a short section here. Now my top, this section here, we're going to let fall, and we're going to take it the same as I did the triangle of graduation. So what I'm going to do is put the head slightly down. Can everyone see okay? Yeah, we can see uh, Yeah, and if we can, I'll... How's it looking, Matt? Is it looking good? Yeah, I mean, it's a little choppy, no, but but I think we're all, uh, we're all, we're, you're, you're great at explaining, so it's perfect. We'll blame Brexit. We'll blame Brexit now. That's uh, the thing in England. That's what we do in England. We blame Brexit. Kind of. <laughs> so, guys, guys, let's look at the animation. Okay. I'm not going that low here. I went a lot lower with the triangular side. You see that? Quite high. Because the sides are going to be quite short here. We're going to be cutting this shot this side to almost the jawline. I I personally love this hair, this haircut. And one of the reasons, guys, I really enjoy to teach quite quite classic Sassoon haircuts is in most cases, you all kind of know how it's supposed to look. So I really have nowhere to hide. I've got to get it exactly right. I quite enjoy that pressure. And secondly, the mechanics of the haircut are so non-subjective. They're very much matter of fact. Well, this is how you do this, and this is how you do that. And I think the lack of that subjective nature to that haircut and the strength of the pragmatism within it make it very easy to transfer it in a standardized way. And I think the benefit of it being transferred in a standardized way it is easier then for the person to transfer it to somebody else, which essentially is what education is. An educator is a student that shares. That's what an educator is, in my opinion. Matt, I'm sure you're always learning that, same as me. Yep. I'm sure everyone who's spending time on their sunny afternoon, wherever you are in the world, I'm sure you're the same. I just got into YouTube, actually. I really am enjoying this YouTube uh, thing I'm doing. I'm just, it's, it's very different to Instagram, of course, which is generally where I've always done close to all my content is Instagram and uh, my website. Yeah. And I've been really enjoying making a few videos. Uh, Matt's been helping me with a lot of technical advice. And uh, I think you make it look, it look so easy, Matt. <laughs> you make it look so easy. So when, I, when I try to do that, I'm like, oh, my God. And you know, I get into a haircut sometimes when I'm doing it, guys. I don't know if any of you are the same. And I'm doing my haircut like this. And then I check the film back and I realize I've gone off screen a little bit. I'm like, oh no. So we're just taking the sections. So one side is lifted higher than the other because the triangular graduation, we wanted the weight going towards the front. So we want the build weight. The square graduation is a more uniform cut. What do I mean by uniform? I mean like a round shape where it follows the head shape more. So working square really kind of follows the head shape more than a triangular shape. The triangular shape is flattening with the nape, building like vertically and it's off towards the front. Square, square isn't like that. Square is quite even. So, we have done the back. So, if we just let this go and have a little look, you can see that I have one side that's longer. This is going more longer towards the front, and this side isn't. This side is kind of sitting very uniform. Now, one of my favorite things to do is to do a strong line, and that's what we're going to do now. We are going to finally do something that looks precise. When we dry the haircut, you will see a lot more on the, in the precision side. When the hair's wet, it's more about the mechanics and the balance. So we have this side here, which is going to be our square graduation. We're going to be cutting this to the jawline. So I'm going to be doing a really nice short box shape. 
We need to make sure that the moisture levels are equal throughout because what is consistent can be trusted. If I've cut to the back where it's pretty wet and then I get to the front and it's dried off, they're different hair textures. So you have to be consistent. You will take your section horizontal, straight across. And what we're going to do is just pull this out of the way. Now, okay, let me give you a few things I want you to assess before you cut a strong uh, precision line. Move the head slightly over. So I just moved my client's head, leaning slightly over. Why? Immediately, gravity is working as a tool for me. It's, it's holding the hair still for me now against a surface. Okay? It's not just dangling free. It's holding it straight. The second thing, so number one, move the hair. Number two, you put the scissor in first. Crazy. Scissor goes in first. Why? This is holding all of the hair away from the irregular surface underneath, the ear, the jaw, all those things. Two, let's get the hair out of my cane. She's shedding a little bit less there. So, what, so one, the hair's moved, moved. Two, three, comb comes over and goes down. Let's look at comb management. Shift your shoulder just a little bit. So it, Sorry, guys. Yeah, no problem. So when you, are doing, when you are using your comb, if I go straight down, I have a lot more control. So let's just show you this again. If I go down here, let's just see if I can go on the other side. Okay, so if I go down like this, my comb, I have much more control of the hair. If my comb is horizontal, I have less control. So I use this so I'm cutting a line. I go in initially to get my control like this. But when I get to cut, cut my line, I release the tension. So let's put all those together just for a moment. Oh. I went on my knees for a second there. That's why when I got up, I was like, wow. Okay. So one, the head's moved. Two, three, we come down. And four, we straighten the cone. Five, we tap from above. Six, we tap below. And we're going to cut. And we cut slightly going backwards. So when you do that, you go slightly back. Slightly back. Think about sawing a piece of wood. Often they start by going back. This stops us from moving the hair in front. Okay, so let's take our next section. Ben, is there a guide that you use to start this to decide i, I tend to work to the, the i tend to work to um the structure of the client's face so what i would say to you is here i've there's no guide that comes from this section at the moment okay which is very strange and is why i found this haircut so tricky it's because there you can work to the zygomatic bone you can work to the mandible bone to okay. any of these features, but it's it's all down to preference. So I chose the lips. Okay. I'm heading towards the lips. So that as we go sense. through here, now the only difference now is, guys, you are not going to cut the, the first, the start of the haircut, the start of the section. This is because there's no guideline underneath it, because the hairline is moving forward all the time. So as you pull this down, we cut it after we cut this in. So when we come back through, we are then able to take it. So why did I do that? You can see that often the first cut is the deepest. You often seem to have a much more pronounced cut with the first one. I would advise you always leave the first section to last, okay? So let's just review that. Always leave the first part of your line to, to put the rest in. 
there's less hair and it's thinner at the front. You know, there's, there's less tension involved. Uh, excuse me, there's less weight there. So, you know, you have to be very careful with that section. Yeah. So as, I, so as I pull this one down, keep the moisture levels equal. As I come out, tap, tap, and I leave the very front alone. And I come back through. It's one of my favorite haircuts, this is man. Yeah, I like this one actually. I think I, 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 I love the, um, the three core graduated shapes. They're probably my three favorite haircuts. Graduated bar, which is the triangular. You've got a round graduation, which is like the wedge, which is one of my favorite haircuts to do. It's just not great for demonstrations because it's kind of one of those haircuts that is, I think it's hard to see it on somebody, a wedge. So when you're doing it, it's what they, people sometimes think you've almost messed up. Yeah. Because I, I, I get a lot of negativity sometimes through social media. Everybody does. It's no big deal. I did a mullet haircut and it got reposted by Hairbrain and I, it got slammed. Yeah. Absolutely slammed. When you try to be yeah, artistic, cool. it's what happens, you know? Yeah. 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 <laughs> I should it's stick to my... Uh, Ben, it's literally, social media is life, right? So like, if you think about, if it's out of the norm, it's weird. And then you get a lot of people complaining or, you know, making fun of things or whatever. It's just, yeah. it's the same as life. Like if you're a little off or weird or whatever, like people, people don't accept it. It's just, it's a funny thing. Absolutely. That is that's a good point. When I, I said to people, you can't have light without shade. Yep. So, see guys, I'm at the hairline here. Sometimes I would tap the hairline. Why would I do that? Think about the hair growth patterns that can appear here. So often I tap the hairline to make sure that I'm compensating for the fact that the roots may be pulling the hair away from the cut line. So we are going to put some graduation in this, guys. Don't worry, we're not leaving our model here with a very heavy line. We are going to do some shape, but I just want to finish this line off. So if the section gets too big, like mine has just got a bit big for me, I'm going to separate it into two, which is, works fine anyway, because we're going to leave that till the end. Comb right from the root each time. I want to make sure my shoulder just drops out the way as I get to the end. As you get to the end, just tap the root, especially when you're going above the round. I feel there's more tension involved. I feel it stretches more sometimes. I used to get a lot of graduation in my hair first when I got to the top, and I never understood why. I think it's because the hair's been stretched against the surface, and it's pulling back more. So I just found that works for me, guys. So just maybe tap the root a little, or use the white pot of your pen, maybe. You know what I just realized would be really out. fun? It is if I would have done if I would have done this haircut with you, that would have been fun. Oh yeah, we should maybe do that one time. Yeah, let's do that. Let's plan that. That would be fun. That'd be great. I think we cut very similar. Well, like just, I'm that. learning a lot, and I'm like thinking right now, like I wish I was practicing with you because I'm I'm taking a lot yeah. of little little tips. I think are going to be great, and like kind of adjust my thinking, you know, my my thought process a little bit. So it's cool. I think that's the main thing we share, you know, because often I don't feel I teach someone something like totally they didn't know. But um, I think that what happens is like they go, I'm going to use that where I'm going to change my comb and I'm going to change it to wire at the top. Um, you know, those types of little things. Let Don't worry if it starts to get a little bit saggy at the very front, guys. Uh, a bit loose, let it go. It's fine. I'm going to bring this all the way over and down just to the lips. And there we have my strong line. Now, I promised you guys some graduation. So let me just turn our beautiful model around. The, the sounds open in the, in the United Kingdom on the 4th of July. And I can imagine everyone's going to be like, how? How do I cut my hair? I'm not 
So I'm going to take my section, guys, to, to join. I'm going to join these two zones. So we're joining the zone at the front and the apex into the crown. So now we have one section that runs straight through all of the zones. Okay, and it's a horizontal section because we, we've got to blend these together. So to blend these together, guys, I can even see if this is going to give you a better angle. I pull my crown and my section at the sides out, like so. I pull the back out, and I get two points of reference. I get the point from the front, and I get a point from the back. Now, I simply connect these together. Why would I do that? This is making sure that our haircut is not only connected vertically square, but it's also horizontally square. So as I, as I do this, I pull my section straight out like this. And I'm connecting a guideline from the front and a guideline from the back. Okay? So now this is going to be my, my new guideline. So now I'm going to take what will be section two, let's say, when it's been cut. Get this out of the way. And then we're going to take away section one. So I've just used that as a guide. Now, where you choose your guide to be has a big say in how much weight you want. If you keep working to a stationary guide, you're going to get a lot of weight and it's going to look like a wedge and probably be a bit unsuitable. We're going to, we're going to work with going back to previous each time. So if I pull this out, hopefully you can see, my guide is the section beneath it. So Almost the previous section I've just cut, that has been used as my guide. See that? So what that's doing is it's helping me to bevel my line in. So you can kind of see now that where's my horizontal shape working straight across the back. Just double check that again. As you pull it out. So we can take section three. Section three. Keep section getting out of the way. Remove two sections now, not one. Two sections now, not one. And we're going to take them together again. And let's just remove this. I want you guys to see more of this. Let's have a look. Okay. So I really want to understand how I know what's cut here. Because as I pull this out, I take my guideline from the front, which is there. Okay. I also have a guideline underneath to make sure. But I also have a guideline at the right-hand side. So you see we have three guides here. We have what we cut at the side, what we cut at the back, and we have the sections we cut underneath. So what is this giving us? Why are we doing this? This is going to give us, guys, a more beveled shape. What does bevel mean? It's going to slightly turn under at the front. Okay, that's what we kind of what we don't want this to be like a triangular shape. We want it to have a natural gradient. Now I'm just going to put some clips in here. Occasionally I'll do this on, on a client, just get the hair out of the way so I know where my bag is. So Savarn is asking, how do you calculate that elevation? <laughs> Well, that's a great question. So first thing, let's look at what elevation gives us. Elevation is the control we have of how much weight we have. So the lower we go, the more weight we're going to get. So I suppose I'm making a decision based on that, based on that principle. How much weight do I want? How flat do I want the shape to be? So with this, we don't want too much weight. So that's why my elevation is actually quite high. So my elevation actually has been pulled out quite high. So now when we go through and we have a little cross check, we can see the section is now vertically triangular, which means as that falls, we've removed some of the hair that was making that one length. Does that make sense so far? Yeah. Absolutely. So your elevation, how you decide your elevation is based on that principle. 
The lower, the heavier, the higher, the more layered. So you judge it to say, if I'm only going to go down to the previous section, it's going to be pretty layered. That's what we were doing here. So that's giving us a much more softer shape. So if you're going above the 90 degree, you're going to have layers. If you go below the 90, you're going to have graduation. It's time for the blow dry. How's that sound? Ready for, yep. ready to dry this off? Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to have you blow dry. Um, and come I'm, back. Yeah, I'm going to, well, I'm going to mute. Well, maybe I'll do that. I'll bring you back in a little bit. So start blow drying. I'm going to do a little Q and A, uh, chat with the people. I want to try to get your signal even better. So we'll, we'll, I'll just call you in like, like three minutes. Uh, obviously you won't be done. Yeah, you go for it. No problem. I'll just bring you, bring you back in. Okay. That sounds great, Matt. Thank you. Thank you, mate. All right, Ben. Clock's ticking. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm there, man. I'm there. <laughs> All right. I'll talk to you in a sec. No problem. All right. All right, guys. So, uh, ben is going to blow dry. So what I want you guys to do um, is you can ask me some questions. I've got, um, I see you guys in the chat. Um, you know, this is, it's always a learning experience for sure. Um, but it's really fun to uh, have Ben on here. I'm learning a ton. I hope you guys are too. I know that the uh, visual of this is a little bit difficult to see, um, but hopefully, uh, you know, you can take advantage of that and just, uh, you know, um, ask questions now. Uh, if you have any questions about what Ben did, um, and I will be watching the chat for that. I'm actually going to bring up, let's see, see if I can bring up a chat here too on all the platforms, Facebook and everything. Chat, chat, chat. So one second. Don't ask. Where is it? Oh, there it is. All right. So I'm bringing up the chat in the browser right now. I can see you guys. I can't bring up your questions on the screen for some reason. They should put a refresh on that for sure. Uh, but I can see you guys on Facebook and everything else. Uh, yeah, Jess, I agree. So that, thank you for that. She says, um, you really shouldn't stress. It sucks. We can't see properly, but he re explains things so well. I know. I actually feel, I feel more bad for him because, uh, you know, this is like a, a great opportunity for him and he's so excited about it. It's just kind of hard to see, but for the most part, like he's such a, an awesome educator. So like, that's what I'm excited about for you guys to see that. Um, all right, cool. So uh, if you guys have questions, post them. I can now see you guys on Facebook, uh, YouTube, all of that. Um, so if you have questions, and Nancy's starting it off with, can you cut my hair? Uh, Nancy, I don't, I'm not sure where you're from. Why don't you guys post that? Where are you watching from? Um, but for the most part, I don't take new clients, but we have stylislocator.com, which has all the people that are part of this uh, community, the free salon education community, and you can find a stylist on there. Just put in your zip code and it'll show you a stylist that is part of our community on there. Um, I think I saw he had one. You know what, Jess? Uh, that's a great call. And actually, I'm going to talk to Ben after the show. We're going to get hooked up. He started a YouTube channel and everything. He has um, a paid education service where he puts tutorials out um, consistently. Uh, but I want to see if I can get some Ben Brown education on our app, uh, hopefully today to be honest. So I know he's making YouTube videos, so I'll start by posting those up. I'm sure he'll let me do that. And then maybe he'll do some exclusive stuff with you guys uh, for you guys as well. I'm sure he wouldn't be opposed to it. Uh, New Jersey. All right, Nancy, you're pretty close. We'll see. We'll see. Uh, but uh, depending on where you're at in New Jersey, there are some, uh, I know some really great hairdressers as well. Um, cue the app. That's right. So uh, while we're waiting for Ben and while you guys are on here hanging out, make sure that you download the FSE Now app. Uh, go to FSE Now on the app store, uh, download it. It's completely free. Um, you guys would love it. I'm gonna play the, I'm gonna roll the promo cause why not? Cause we're waiting for Ben to finish blow drying and then he's gonna show you the detail work, how to get that outer perimeter edge. Uh, it's going to be really cool. So here is the app promo, and then we'll talk about that, and I'll answer any of your other questions. So post those questions in the chat right now uh, so I can answer them when I get back here.
now. Go to the App Store FSC Now, type it in. It's free, 100% free, uh, and you can become part of our community, build a profile, share your work. Let's see who we're going to highlight today. There was some pretty awesome work on there last night. So FSC Now, open the app. All the education, today's classes, all of that stuff is on there. And then let's go to, it's basically if Instagram and Netflix had a baby for hairdressers. <laughs> That's what it is. All right, let's see if, uh, oh, Blanca. Blanca's on here all the time. So look, you can make a profile, start posting your work. Beautiful profile uh, Blanca has on there. It's awesome to see. She's got all of her information. If you want to send her a message, if... Uh, Basically what happens is you build a profile, you put all your work on there, and then that goes to styluslocator.com. So those of you that are looking for a hairdresser can go to Stylist Locator, see somebody's profile, send them a message. Um, you make a profile and you can talk to them about your hair and all of that stuff. So uh, we're trying to build the connection between people that want their hair done and, and professional hairdressers that are a part of our community. So you can definitely check it out on there. All right, let's see where we're at. I could, I could be your Aussie assistant. Possibly, possibly Jess. Um, Nancy, you're awesome. Can't wait for Ben. I can't wait either. Uh, we'll call him back in one second. Let's see. I'm left-handed student who struggles watching my right-handed instructor. Any tips? So Eva, that's actually a really great question, Eva, Eva. Um, so Ben talked about that at the beginning of the show because he's left-handed. So he said, um, just do the opposite. So if you have a right-handed instructor and you're trying to learn, if they're cutting the right side, then you cut the left side. And then what you're doing would be identical to what they're doing. So just you just gotta flip that uh, and then it'll make a lot more sense for you. Don't try to cut it the way they're cutting it on both sides. Um, I'll get my assistant to call you. Okay, Jess, cool. All right, um, Babs. I think that's good. I think I got everybody's, most people's questions. Why don't you leave it a little longer, uh, Babs? So uh, I'm not sure if you're talking about the certain cut that uh, Ben did, but so what I kind of want to go over and what Ben created so far is he did triangular graduation on one side and then he did square graduation on the other. So he's basically putting together two haircuts. Now you could have that be one haircut um, and it could be just an asymmetrical bob or um, you could do the square technique on both sides and have a, a square bob, or you could do the triangular bob on both sides and have a triangular bob. It's kind of showing you three haircuts in one. So, uh, it's a pretty cool technique. You could keep it longer if you want. You can go shorter if you want. You could, uh, layer it more if you want. You could have it heavier if you wanted. So that's kind of the beauty of this industry and where people get too wrapped up in it being a haircut and not a technique. The technique creates all the haircuts, right? A haircut is only one thing. So you don't want to learn just a haircut. You want to learn techniques uh, as you go. Um, let's see. What shears did he use? So he was using uh, Mizutani, uh, which you guys know I'm a big Mizutani fan. We sell Mizutani scissors on Shop FSC. There you go, shopfsc.com. Uh, so we sell Mizutani scissors. I didn't even know he used them, but... Um, you know, in my opinion, they're the best made scissors in the industry. They're expensive. Um, so I'm going to tell you that right now. We have payment plans available, and we did that during COVID. Uh, we're going to keep doing it, but um, we just realized it's it's expensive for a hairdresser to buy an $800, $500, $1,000 scissor. Um, but if you want the best made scissor in the industry and you don't want to be ripped off, then it's the best way to go because a lot of people, and we talked about this before in the show, um, you know, they're buying $30 scissors from China or wherever they're made and they're selling them for $800 and they're ripping you off. So just be very careful. Mizutani's made in Japan by hand by craftsmen that have been doing it for a hundred years. So just, just be very careful uh, where you spend your money. Mizutani's definitely the way to go. Uh, let's see. Uh, true. It's all about technique. That's right. Clock technique was excellent. Loved it. Uh, Savarna, that's a, that's a great point. Um, so let me recap some of the things that I learned from Ben and then we'll call him back. So, um, two things that I'll definitely take from this. The, the biggest thing was the clock where he said, you know, you go from the one point, let me see. 
So he said you go from the one point in the back here and you do a clock, right? So you go from six o'clock to uh, five o'clock to four o'clock to three o'clock, but you never, so you stay in this same position in the back, which I really liked, and then you cut everything down. So everything starts to get uh, heavier and longer towards uh, the ear, which I, I liked that tip from him. Uh, and then the other thing was when he cut it horizontal on the square side, um, and even on the uh, triangular side where the hole happens that everybody talks about that we're taught in school, that hole, um, that's actually the length of where you're going to cut that line. And that's what we're going to see him do next. So those are two things that I thought were super cool that, that he said that I'm absolutely going to use. And then also the elevation of his outer um, guideline when he was working around the, the side of the head instead of cutting a triangular bob and keeping everything a little bit lower he was actually elevating it up about this high which i thought was really cool because it softens takes out some weight um, so i think when he goes in to cut this perimeter line uh, as we bring him back on you're going to notice that it's a nice lightweight feel to that shape instead of a super heavy feel where you have to carve through a ton of hair to cut that line which is sometimes where i struggle a little bit so uh very exciting stuff. Let's see if we can give him a call back right now. And hopefully we have a signal. We'll see what happens. What's up? Welcome back. Hey, how's it Holy, going? Holy, wait a minute. That's fast. I don't know about Matt. <laughs> I thought, uh, that can't be the same. A bit. That can't be the same mannequin, right? Uh, <laughs> yeah. I He's it. already I got it smooth. Work. I did work pretty fast to be fair. The shape looks good though, huh? Yeah, it looks great. We were just talking about it on here. So I'm really well, thank you so much, guys. Here's one thing I want to tell you. So first off, your video's uh, signal is great right now. Um, so hopefully it'll stay that way. Second, people said that they didn't even care about the video signal because you spoke so well about the haircut. Oh. Um, so everybody was just super excited about it. So we can't wait to see what, you know how you're gonna end this. End yeah. This Guys, this is probably like oh. the the showstopper. You know, it's it's a big, it's such a cool thing to do at the end when you're fine. So you see, from what you see here now, my silhouette is fluid, so I've got no real steps. But you see, my outline hasn't been cut yet. So that's the exciting part we get to do. I have cut my outline a little at the side on the square graduation, but I haven't done the hairline yet. So there's a lot of exciting things and. And what's exciting about it is, yes, it's very visual, but there's a huge amount of fundamental hair cutting techniques involved that you can use for things like bangs, for things like uh, working with a textured pixie haircut. They kind of have a many applications. So try maybe not to look at the haircut as this is one style. Look at the mechanics and how and why it works and apply that, like Matt said, apply that little by little into what you do and that's kind of how i learn i would pick up like a tip and it would unlock a lot of new ways i could cut the haircut i was already doing so what you see me do now guys off camera what you didn't see was i wrapped and dry the hair using a nine row vest brush so i just used a pretty simple nine row vest brush i used a dyson hair dryer and i worked furiously to get it dry in a fairly quick time and then I'm using the GHDs now and just going through and giving the hair like a nice polish and it's going to make it a lot easier for me to um, to refine the hair if I have the ends nice and straight. So there's two things I want to talk about real quick. So um, Lynn, Lynn said he fixed the hole laugh out loud. So here's where I want to <laughs> <laughs> I want to address the hole and I'm going to have you do it too, but I want to, yes. uh, you know, cause I was trying to explain to everybody. One of the takeaways for me uh, on the way you're cutting is not the whole part. Cause I never, I, I've learned since school that this is not a hole. That's not what it is. Um, it's a guideline. It's a guideline. And that's, but the way that you described it as a guideline was one of my favorite things about today is that I can use that in my brain to now think, that's the guideline that I want to take to cut my line. Yeah. Um, but for Lynn, um, I don't think she, she's been on the class the whole time, but I don't think she got the point of, um, you know, it's not a hole. 
um, when you cut yeah. shape, when you cut shape, you're focused on the interior layering, weight, graduation, all that stuff. And the outer perimeter doesn't matter. Um, the outer perimeter is what you cut later, which is what you're going to cut now. So it's not a hole, yeah. it's a guide, right? So, so Lynn, imagine, I want to imagine, I'm just going to get my hair straight. I want to imagine that, um, let's say Lynn's teaching me how to do a bleach. Yeah? Yeah. Um, and we're going we're gonna to learn how to do a bleach, right? So I do everything that Lynn says. We get the hair, mix the peroxide correctly, we weigh it, do everything we're supposed to do. And when we come to wash off the bleach, it's a bit yellow and needs a toner. At that point, I get a bit upset thinking that I've done the bleach wrong. And Lynn then says to me, no, Ben, we have to apply the toner. The bleach is a product that lives in the lining pigment. We have to tone. The refining at the end is your toner to your haircut. Yeah. We have to do this at the end. You can't do this when the hair's wet. This particular shape, the hole that is formed, and Lynn is absolutely right. There is a definite hole, which is why I made um, I explained it. But you see, this is going to be my guideline. That's what I have to connect into. So when I come around here, okay. And Jess, I'm, I'm going to ask him your question at the end, okay? Just so you know. We will come from here into there. That's kind of the guide of what we do. If you go any higher than that, you know you're probably going too short, okay? So let me let me take my let me savor this moment. I do enjoy this. You see the difference, guys, in the sides now. Look at that. Look how much shorter this side is. And then that side, you've got all that weight sitting there. Okay. So don't start standing square to the back. You want to start standing square to just behind the ear because you need to be able to see your guideline. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start in the middle with a chipping technique. Just watch that shoulder. There you go. It's the best sound. It's great. So you see, I'm using, these are the best scissors I've ever, ever found. And they're from uh, m and uh, a UK education company. And the tip is so fine. But even though I've got like two pairs of Mitsutani here, I use these for my line, but see, that has given me such a sharp line, hasn't it? Yeah, that looks really good. But guys, the thing I like most, guys, is this, no line in, in the graduation. So you see, I get excited by this because you have to be a little bit patient with me with the wet cut because you really can't necessarily see where I'm going. So then all of a sudden when it's dry, I get to show you this is what's happening. So then I come round to the front. And I start to go into my line a little. One other benefit, guys, of doing the chipping technique, which is lots of little triangles going into the line, is it sort of collapses the line a little bit. It sort of makes the line sit a little flat to the neck. Now, once I have that particular part of this section in place, I need to get some idea of what length to cut the front. Do you remember I said that we haven't exactly got the length correct at the front yet. So groom the hair to kind of a natural form. Okay. I don't personally want to use a clip at this point because we're going to be taking length off. If I was only refining, I may use a clip. So Lynn says thank you, by the way. Oh, Lynn, thank you. I hope that the bleaching thing works because I explain that a lot in classes where I say to people, the refining process is like a toner to a bleach. You probably wouldn't judge the bleach when it would just have been shampooed. You know, you, you know there's another process needed. It's a similar thing with the, with the way Matt and I refine our work is you kind of got to let us refine it and you can see where we're going. Now, I'm going to be working to blend this line in. And if you notice my scissors, as they close, they go backwards. They go backwards. This helps me to keep the hair straight and not disturb it. So as I go through, it's 
So this opposed to you using the tip of the scissor at more of an angle. Yeah, when I want to take length away, I will cut normal. Okay. So when I'm taking length, I kind of need to do this. So if I'm doing this, I'm going to be moving the hair everywhere. So when it's a small amount of hair, I refine with the tip. Or when I create a curved line, like I have at the hairline for you all today, you need to use the tip. When I'm creating a straight line, or in this case, an A line, I use the actual scissor in a club cut technique. Okay. Looks pretty sharp though, doesn't it? That's yeah, good. that's good. So let me just lower her down a little so maybe you can see the total shape that I've got. So this is my triangular outline, okay? So we've got it going from the shorter, the longer to shorter to longer. My internal shape is sitting nice and neat, which I'm really relieved about. <laughs> and um, you see, this is what I meant about the graduation at the front. We have our graduation at the front, but we haven't got like a big, like a dog's ear, which is what we say in the UK, like a spaniel's ear. We don't have that. But if you weren't careful with the graduation, you could potentially get that, where it just suddenly sits very, very heavy at the front. Now, oh, here she is from the 80s. Oh, this is just, uh, oh, it's exciting. No way to start. I'm right. so happy that the signal, so this is the funny thing, guys, like everybody that's been with us this whole class and how beautiful your signal is right now in the picture. Oh, good. It's just funny. Guys, look how neat my yeah. silhouette is. Yeah, See, it looks that's so what, good. Like, yeah, this is what me and Matt will talk about is your silhouette is a great way of, of judging your haircut. And I haven't thinned this or texturized this. I have straightened it, definitely. <laughs> but uh, we haven't done anything else. Now, we're going to start with the corner behind the ear. Okay, so to do this, we're going to start in the middle again. Okay, so we're going to be going from our point in the middle here to a lower position than we did on the triangular side. This is how I would refine a square graduation. So you need to decide on how high you want to refine it. So I normally pick some hair that, that, that appears. So let's say we're going to start around about there. Okay. So we just put in ourselves a little bit of a um, template. You know, it's interesting, like what Lynn was saying, because when I teach classes anywhere, people always think like, oh my goodness, he has made a huge mistake on his graduated bob. And that's kind of why I always explain about it to say like, look, you know, I'm not going crazy. Don't worry. When yeah. I, like, I like the analogy of the toner. I think it makes sense. Yeah, I like that analogy too. And I think um, we're all taught... Um, that a hole is bad, right? It is. Yeah, definitely. I totally agree with you. I totally yeah. agree with you. And you know, when I retrain, I retrained at 34. And um, yeah. suddenly from being on the sound floor to never wanting to see anything like that in my work, to suddenly finding that, you know, I was doing a graduate with Bob and, and uh, the, you know, suddenly I see this hole and I'm thinking, oh my goodness, I made this huge mistake. Now, we come round and start to create... A curve. So what we're doing is we're working off the square shape we put at the front. And it's important for people to understand that you could use just his triangle technique on the one side if you're not going for this exact haircut, right? We talk about yeah. this is technique, not a full cut. This is... I, I think that's a really, really yeah. good way of explaining it because well, obviously when I train people, often I ask them what they want to learn. Are they developing technique or do they want to show them a step-by-step -step haircut? And the thing about technique is it means you can develop more than one haircut if you get the technique locked in. If I show you one haircut, you may not fully understand the whole mechanics of it. So if your client or guest says to you, I want to vary that the haircut you're giving me a little bit, you may not possess the understanding to do that. Yep. 
That's why I like Matt's um, uh, Pixie Cup. I thought that was a really good tutorial. And uh, like I got a lot from that. And when you're an educator yourself, and it was really interesting because you're using a razor, to, like a razor comb, I think it was. Yeah. And I don't use a razor. Um, but I sort of thought, why don't I use a razor? You know, when I saw you doing it, I thought, why don't I use a razor? Because it would actually be really cool to use one. So that was kind of exciting for me. All right, so we're going to go through, and at the moment it's only small amounts, but I'm just going to go ahead and re-elevate this section a bit more. For me, I feel it's a bit heavy, but hey, look, again, silhouette sitting good for you. So yeah. I'm going to go through my section, starting fairly high, and I'm going to re-elevate my section, and I'm, going to I'm not going to point cut it still. I'm still going to club cut at the moment. So why am I doing this? I just feel it's a little heavy. So instead of just texturizing my haircut, I would review the technique I've put into the haircut first. So you see, that looks better. Yep. And it still hasn't given me a line or anything. So it just goes to show sometimes, like this for me was like, like voodoo when I was on the salon floor. I never would have gone near it. But when I was exploring my own personal development, I saw after haircuts, which were kind of the, like the nine, so soon call it the nine. Three graduation, three layer, and three line. And I just wanted to get them locked down. That's a little, I love to see that. Um, I just wanted to get them locked down so I knew exactly how to do those nine. And then I, wanted, I thought, well, people will know I can put hair if I can do those nine. And then you start combining them. So like now I've combined two of them. Now, I'm going to do a little bit of softening and texturizing just to finish up the haircut. So I'm switching back to my Mitsutani 5.2 inch now. The other ones, the ones I've just, just been using aren't great for texturizing. The blade is a flat blade and it's not convex, so it doesn't really have much strength. So, when I go through my section, you can see it's sitting pretty neat, right? So that's the problem a little bit. It's not very versatile. The only time I'm happy to texturize though is when the haircut is technically achieved. I don't want to texturize to try to resolve an issue. Like if I saw a line in my work, I would be wanting to go over the technique A good little technique, actually, just to share something with that doesn't relate to this haircut. If you do want to remove a lot of bulk on a short haircut, this is a technique that I use. It only works if the section is pulled vertical. When you pull out a vertical like this, you can see there's my square line. You go, I call it double tap. I cut the same section a couple of times. I think I saw this from Jacob, Jacob Khan. Okay. Now, as that falls, it collapses the shape. I'm pretty sure. Because uh, I've actually taught at Jacob Salm before. He was the first guy um, who helped me come out to the United States and teach. Oh, cool. Yeah, always have a big uh, affection for Jacob So that. Yeah, he's a good guy. He put me up in a cool hotel and uh, he made me laugh so much. He's the funniest guy. <laughs> so... Let's just start to get to the end of this now. So you can see, I failed the exam because both of the sides aren't the same. Yeah. <laughs> but you can kind of see that what we've got is an asymmetric haircut. We have one side that has been cut to the lips. Okay, and that sits nice. So I, I taught you how we did that in the square graduation. The square graduation keeps hair that you can't can see around the nape from the front. So it's good if the client wants hair there and also good if the client has a difficult nape. The triangular graduation is a lot more salon wearable. I think you could see this much more on the salon floor than you could the square. So you see what we have through here is a shape that gets flatter and thinner behind the ear and longer and heavier towards the front. So hopefully this tutorial shows you 
two fundamental uh, graduation haircuts using core shapes and how they work to the salon floor, not just how they work for the mannequin head. Very good. So do you have some questions, Matt? So I'm reading through. Most people just saying that they love it. Um, I did have it's a, a nice question. shape. I'm really happy with the shape. I do want to go to Jess's question up here. Let's see where we're at. Um, okay, I have a question for Ben. Uh, what are your top three haircutting tips for a hair student that will make haircutting less nerve-wracking? That's a really, really good question. So I would say that it, what people find nerve-wracking maybe varies per person. So I'll answer it as myself. Um, the first thing I would say that is you've got to be well-practiced. So there's a particular area. I write down um, a month five things I want to improve. So I will write down um, like five different haircuts I, I can't do. Like the square grad I did for you guys today was one of them. So I chose to do um, three graduate haircuts. So if you're a bit nervous with short hair, I recommend that you focus on the three graduated shapes, that's square, circle, triangle. So that's number one. Number one is practice, 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 practice. Number two is confidence generally comes from, uh, for me, it's from two areas. It's the enthusiasm, it's the experience and belief. So confidence comes from those two areas. So people say you've got to believe in yourself. You've got to believe in yourself. But I say that's, that's, that's hard to do because when you've experienced doing something, you'll believe it more. So I know I can put this haircut because I've experienced doing it many times. So if I said to you, believe you can do this haircut purely based on what you'll be doing, that's ridiculous. I would say you need to practice this. Practice it like mad. And, one and the third thing would be, I think you've got to have passion and knowledge. So if I was doing a talk on Matt's uh, channel today, on free sound education, about something I wasn't passionate about, I wouldn't have the same confidence. If I was doing a talk, so if you asked me to do a barrier arch today, I wouldn't be able to do it. I, I would have hit. I can't pull a hair. <laughs> so you see, so what happens if you're not passionate about it? You see, that's, that's the hard thing I have no advice for. So if you say, I don't like cutting men's hair, I don't like barbering, or if you say, I, uh, I only like doing colour, it's hard because if you have been in a sound situation, you have to be quite versatile. So I would say, like, just if you love the industry and, um, and focus on that and practice the things that scare you, once you've experienced doing the things well that scare you, That'll help reinforce confidence. I like that. Yeah, I always say people like if I teach someone one to one and I say you're experienced and you have belief, there's no point talking about belief right now. All I need to do is I need to help you experience with a positive experience of cutting hair. That will reinforce a positive impression of yourself and that will give you more confidence. For sure. Uh, yeah. I can't tell you how much practice is the pivotal part of everything I've done. Everything I've done from working on the sound floor as a sound owner whose business failed to becoming an international educator where I've taught um, five continents and done and worked with some amazing people. And that transition really happened because I spent all my free time practicing nine fundamental haircuts. Yeah. And that was it. That was literally it. Yeah. So, um, do you have a do you have a stool or something you can sit down? We'll talk for a sec. Yeah. Uh, so, I, I, I just uh, yeah, I'll get a chair. Give me two yeah, seconds. Let's just move, on the side. Let's move your head out of the way there. So, um, yeah, if you guys have questions for Ben, uh, now's the time. Ask them in the chat. I can see you guys. Um, I did see uh, Gladys has a um, a question, so I'll ask her in a sec. Um, you know, I'm gonna be with Ben for a couple more couple more minutes um and i want to talk about his education uh pivot point saying love this look thanks ben and matt you're very welcome thank you again uh thank you to pivot point oh for, yeah uh you guys are awesome um i i sent out a message to uh ginger who's my contact in the u.s and i said ginger can you make it happen can we get ben a mannequin and uh, I didn't know they were going to hand deliver it to you, but that is uh, literally they made it uh, happen. Paula, who um, 
Paula Slade is who I work with, head of education in the UK, I believe. And uh, Paula, uh, she, a guy arrived at my door this morning and he just sent a delivery from Pivot Point, which was different to, you know, uh, different to how I normally get my parcel delivered. Right. That's quite nice. Matt must really have some sway in Pivot Point. <laughs> and then, um, I know, they made me Paula, look good. I got an email from Paula and she said, uh, you know, um, my husband drops it off. So I was like, wow, that is amazing. <laughs> By the way, guys, um, don't adjust your settings on your screen because of my face. This is how red I actually am. So <laughs> don't worry. <laughs> hey, you worked hard for us today. I, I appreciate it. Uh, I loved it. More I loved than you it. know. I feel like I've had a little workout, to be honest with you. Yeah, great. we got to do it uh, again. And I definitely, I mean, your, the, the video quality on the second half was phenomenal so we guys we just got to figure that out um but i can't wait to have you back here so gladys is saying um when did you realize you were passionate about haircutting that's a really good question that is so i actually was more into color for quite a while and the reason was i i so guys i worked for one salon for 16 years and then i put my own salon i had that for six now when i had my own salon I realized how insular I'd been for a large amount of time I was at the salon. Because at the salon, I thought I was a great hairdresser because I was always fully bought. But you know what I realized was I was a great salesperson. I wasn't a great crass person. And the more I understood this about the industry, the more I chose to uh, really take this very seriously, this goal. Of, um, of bettering myself. Now, initially, I did that in colour because of social media. We, we really grew our social media initially with lots of pastel toners, lots of before and afters. So we were a salon, you see. So my initial thing was we had to build the salon brand. Now, when I started to work, I started to work for a product brand a little bit at one point, and I was meant to be colour for them. And I realised a lot of their stylists who did cutting didn't want to cut short hair. So I ended, up having to, I ended up doing a lot of the short hair and the, and the precision haircuts. And what I realized was that the practicing I was putting in, I was, I was probably at a better level than I'd allow myself to believe, but I still wanted to maintain a degree of uh, humility and just keep working hard. Now, it, it was almost then that I launched the education, but I launched it teaching color initially. And then I just did one cutting class and it sold out straight away. And Slowly but surely, I think I just developed and developed and developed, and then I put all my energy into it. So it's actually a question. It was really by accident because it was education I was passionate about and learning I was passionate about and becoming better at what I do. So it wasn't necessarily one area of hairdressing initially, but what I realized was it becomes a lot easier if you specialize in one thing and put your, all your energy into one thing. So I put all my energy into learning the, the hair cutting. And like I said, I became obsessed with the nine soon haircuts because they're very recognizable. They're very difficult. Um, well, they're, 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 they're perceived as being difficult. But the mechanics are incredibly fundamental and pragmatic. Mm -hmm. And this enables me to learn them fluently inside and out because they're non-subjective. And that has a quality to it. And that quality is that when I work to share what I know with other people, we do share in a pragmatic way. And hopefully that has a sense of logic. And that fundamental nature of logic is something that most people are aligned to. Because if you make it something that is subjective, people often feel nervous to question that because they don't want to seem like they don't understand it. But when it is fundamental, you say, if you put it out here, you'll lay out. If you put it out here, you'll graduate. Hopefully that's something you apply to all your hair pots. So that we don't, like, a, like my friends um, from three, I don't want to teach you to do a hair, you know, haircut. I'd like you to understand my processes of cutting hair. We call it the how and the why. We want you to understand how and why. And Matt's education is exactly the same. You know, when I was listening to Matt's education, he talked about the shape of the hair, why it was significant working on the parietal ridge. And, and I thought, you know, that makes total sense to me. And... You see, when you learn the fundamentals in, in that way and with that passion, it unlocks so many possibilities within your hair cutting. And, and you realize there isn't one haircut, there's just the technique and the processes of hair, of hair cutting. Yep, for sure.
I'm at, I'm throwing your Instagram up here because everybody wants to know what it is. Oh, it's been misspelled. What's that? Ha, ha spelled wrong. Oh, ha, <laughs> yeah, that's. Oh not man, right. <laughs> that's not right. <laughs> all right. That's all right. Yeah. But you see, one thing I say, Matt, a lot is I say to people that there are no advanced haircuts, and and there are no basic haircuts, and people often don't like me saying that, but I'll tell you why I say that. I say that it's it's about you and what you know. Because one person's basic, like I think a graduated bob is a fundamental haircut, but there's a lot of stars that think it's a very advanced haircut. Yeah. So you see, that's perception. So I simply say the more you know, the more your work is perceived as advanced. The less you know, the less you can do, essentially. Or the less you can do with comfort. You know, like if I had to do a colour, I roughly know how to colour hair. But I wouldn't have anywhere near the same level of, of confidence with, with, with what I do. Even when I see someone applying a colour, they're so fast. And I'm like, it, it, mine wouldn't, mine just would be everywhere. I'd be all over the wall. So uh, <laughs> I stick to yeah. one thing, cutting hair. Yep. So, uh, so Jess is saying the nine fundamental haircuts, you're talking about the Sassoon haircuts. Yep. That's absolutely correct. Yes, yeah, Sassoon did, did nine haircuts, three line, three graduation, three layer. And essentially, they all, we've got them all on, on um, I mean, pretty much everywhere has them online. Rattly, you've got the Shack haircut is around layer. That's a Sassoon fundamental haircut. It's just obviously without the bangs. Right. So you have nine, nine, uh, three layer, three graduation, three line. The round line is probably the hardest haircut, I think. I think that's a really hard haircut, the round line. It is. And it honestly, is. Um, I think um, if anybody it, loves haircutting, haircutting, you you should watch them. Like there's no, yeah. I mean, the ABCs of Sassoon, I, I think you're going to notice after you watch those and then you watch any educator there is, you're going to see influence from you know, from those nine haircuts, those nine techniques. I, I would totally agree with that. It, all the cutting houses you look at, like in the UK, uh, uh, obviously we have Sassoon in London, we have Tony Guy, Mahogany, Alain, MMP, uh, many of them, they'll all have versions of that. Yeah. Uh, Seiko, they're all, and in the, in, the Uni- in the United States, it was Nick Bernardi, I think. And um, he was huge, massive educator, and of Stephen Moody. And, you know, they will knock these haircuts out like they're nothing. And, you know, I mean, I personally find them challenging um, uh, at certain times, but I like the fact that, you know, there's a process and I can learn the process and practice it. Whereas, you know, like a while ago, I used to do a lot of long hair, a lot of dressing, a lot of hair, a lot of braiding. And um, I remember someone would say to me, like, uh, the fashion weeks we have in the UK, I'd be assisting there. And they'd say, we want the hair to look very ethereal. But, you know, the thing about that is that term ethereal is really subjective. Like, I could make, ethereal means out-of-worldly. So what does that mean? You know, what am I supposed to do? But if you said, prep the root with this product, I want this, you know, I prefer the pragmatics. I prefer it to be um, A plus B equals C. And that just calms me and keeps me there. And I think the difficulty sometimes with demonstrating a haircut like this view all is most people know, I think, what they're supposed to look like. They know what a graduate bob looks like, so you've got to get it on the bottom. But again, as I said earlier in this tutorial, I personally find that more motivating for yeah. myself. Yeah, for sure. So uh, I think we got through majority of the questions. Everybody just loves it. Um, uh, hopefully you guys will go follow Ben, uh, Ben Brown Hair, spell hair right if you can. Yeah. Uh, and then yeah. Um, we... So definitely, I'd love to do this again with you for sure. Um, and then also, um, I'm kind of hoping with your YouTube venture that you will put some of your education. We can make a Ben Brown section on our app. Yeah, uh, yeah, cool, um, man, definitely. Uh, so yeah. that we can help promote that. But go follow Ben on YouTube. I think you can just put in, I put in Ben yeah, Brown so Education. Yeah, ben, uh, ben Brown BB Education, I think. Yeah. So, and uh, I'm new to it, and I've only uploaded one video that was made purely for YouTube and, uh, and I didn't, you'll notice I didn't film it correct. I filmed it portrait and then I realized, I was like, oh, I don't know. <laughs> um, but then uh, I still, I've, I've, I've just filmed today a great tutorial that I'm launching on Sunday for YouTube, which is a graduate of Bob. Okay. Just something I love doing. I thought, why not start with 
something I love doing. And like the short hair thing is interesting, like what you were saying, and this is why I like your education so much, because it's very logical, but it's very visual. And often people don't see them as one. But like I was trying to explain the difference in where you start on a haircut and why, why, that, why that makes the haircut look a certain way. Because if you understand those principles, I feel that puts you in control of your decisions of cutting hair. Yeah. And it's a bit like, you know, if, if you didn't fully understand those things, you've always got to follow the same recipe instead of perhaps adding or subtracting or whatever. I think it just makes you a more lucid person in, in what you do. That, I think that's my point with it. For sure. Yeah, that's awesome. All right, cool. So um, I'm going to I'm going to let you go, but uh, so you can enjoy your day, enjoy your night, really. Um, and yeah. thank you so much. I can't wait to do more stuff with you. Um, it was an awesome class today. I uh, really appreciate it. I just want to thank you, Matt. Tell, it's a, I really enjoyed it. I'm tell sorry everybody, I was late, guys. Hey, tell everybody. Um, instead of just following you on Instagram, you do have a, a paid education. Uh, yeah, I do yeah. have an online subscription site, which is essentially uh, the videos are quite long, uh, quite in depth. And uh, yeah, on my website, which is my website is bbeducationuk.co.uk, there's a bunch of stuff on there. I have a channel on there where people subscribe monthly and they get loads of tutorials. And of course, I have my YouTube, which is essentially a condensed version of a lot of what's on there. So it's, it's kind of cool to start with my YouTube and get an idea of what I'm about. And um, yeah, hopefully Matt will have me back soon. I'll be on time, I'll be on time, uh, not like half an hour late. And then, and then the funny thing was, I couldn't, I logged in, I don't know if anyone else is this lazy as me, but I logged in on my phone for Skype and then I didn't know what password was. So when I tried to log in on my MacBook, I didn't know what the password was. <laughs> and I was like, oh no, and everyone's waiting. So yeah, it's pretty stressful, but it was fun. Yeah, I loved it. It was fun. Hey, you jumped in like a pro. I mean, that's that's a lot of stress to then try to teach a, a very precision, you know, haircut after. So yeah, uh, it's, it's, uh, it was good. I enjoyed it. Thank you. Sweet. Well, good job, and uh, definitely um, go follow Ben. And obviously, you can get all of his links when you go to his Instagram. So just go to Ben Brown Hair on Instagram, and you'll be able to follow him. Hope you guys enjoyed this cut. Uh, ben, thank you so much. I'll talk to you soon. All right. Cheers, guys. Stay safe. All right, see you we'll, soon. We'll see you. All right, guys. So um, let me click here. Yep. All right. So um, thank you guys for being awesome. Let me hit buttons. Um, you guys are all the best. Um, always appreciate you guys hanging in there, learning, uh, you know, building this community, building this thing up. I always have a great time with you guys. Uh, I will be back tomorrow. Tomorrow's going to be weird um, because I have... Tomorrow's going to be weird, so I'm, I'm not sure the exact time I'll be on. It might be a little bit later than noon, um, but I will text you guys. So if you can't, uh, if you're not on my text messages, text me uh, right now, 215-608-2612, um, and I will text you when we go live. Didn't do that today. I forgot. Um, but I will tomorrow. I'll text you. Uh, I'm really hoping. Next week, we'll get back to normal. We're actually opening the salon next week, so that's exciting. I uh, can't wait to get back in. Uh, you know, get the staff back in here doing stuff, hanging out with the team. Um, but yeah, I should be gone tomorrow. I know I'm actually thinking about the day. It's crazy, but I'll figure it out. And I can't wait to teach you guys again. And then next week we'll be back to normal Monday through Friday, uh, doing our thing. So, um, thank you guys. Can you like Instagram? me? Oh yeah. Instead of calling. Yes. Yes. I post it on Instagram. I try to post it on the Instagram stories as well. So go follow at Free Salon Education. Uh, also follow Ben Brown. Thank you to him uh, for doing the class today. Super fun. Uh, who do you guys want to see on the show next? Let me know in the, uh, the chat, the comments. Um, let's see what artists we can get in here. I will be teaching more next week. I didn't do that as much this week. I like having the guest songs. I like to learn too. Uh, it makes it really fun for me. Uh, it helps me grow as well. So... Um, we need to cut last Friday's mannequin again. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. All right. Um, cool. All right. Thank you guys so much. Uh, make sure you download the FSE Now app. Become a part of our community. Uh, join all of us. Uh, thank you guys. Uh, that's it. What do we say at the end of the show? It's going to be a great day. I'll see you guys soon. Be a great day. Thanks. 
chop it, clip it, spray it, flip it. I woke up this way. It's gonna be a great day. Chop it, clip it, spray it, flip it. Let me show you the way. It's gonna be a great day. Chop it, clip it, spray it, flip it. I woke up this way. It's gonna be a great day.